Hi, my name is Autumn Dixon, and this week is April 22nd through the 28th of the Come Follow Me program associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And this week we are in Mosiah chapters 1 through 3. Now, this message was a message that I really needed this week as I was writing it. And it came at exactly the right time. Now, I have spent the last few weeks trying as hard as I possibly can (laughs) to prepare these messages and to make goals and to get ahead and to, I just, I had all of these ideas for what I wanted. And I felt like no matter what I did, all I found was obstacles. And maybe it was because I needed this message at this moment, right as I was writing it. And maybe, (laughs) hopefully this message isn't just for me, but for someone else who might need it this week. Now, (laughs) I don't normally announce this quite so early, but since you can see more of me than you normally can in my, how I used to film it, I'm pregnant again. (laughs) I am not super far along right now, but by the time this video comes out, I'll be farther along. And I have a baby at home who is five months old. (laughs) And before I go too much into it, I do want to acknowledge that I'm very grateful that I can have children. I would not trade my problems for someone else's problems. But I have struggled with this news. My babies will be 13 months apart. And the news came at a time where I already felt like I was working from sunup to sundown. And... when I felt like I couldn't keep my head above water. Um, Between the nausea and the fatigue and the depression that often accompanies me being pregnant, I've been a little bit of a basket case about it, if you can't tell. (laughs) Whenever I try to sit down and I try to write a message about Christ, I feel like I'm swimming through this nebulous darkness and I'm trying to like just cut through a little bit to just shine a little bit of light in so I know what I'm supposed to share. And by the time I start to work through my process and write, I am left totally drained. I don't like the mom that I am when I'm pregnant. (laughs) I'm much more irritable and very depressed. And I don't like the wife that I am when I'm pregnant. (laughs) And it is very difficult to share a message about Jesus Christ when I am feeling extremely agitated. (laughs) And it was in this state of mind that I read this verse. So this is Mosiah. It is chapter two, it's verse 30. And this is King Benjamin and he is talking to his people. It says, for even at this time, My whole frame doth tremble exceedingly while attempting to speak unto you. But the Lord God doth support me and hath suffered me that I should speak unto you and hath commanded me that I should declare unto you this day that my son Mosiah is a king and a ruler over you. So I am not here (laughs) to declare that my child is going to be your king. But I can echo some of these other sentiments that King Benjamin has said. And I know that I am not the only one who has felt too weak to accomplish what has been asked. I know that I'm not the only one who has asked if Heavenly Father has asked too much. And I know that I'm not the only one who has been overwhelmed at the idea of having to choose faith and trust for another day. So this message is for us who have felt those feelings before. The message is that the Lord will help us and support us in accomplishing what he wants us to accomplish. And there are a couple principles that he has been 
working with me on as I have tried to become okay. <laughs> and I want to share these principles with you and hopefully you will have a better memory than I have had thus far. <laughs> and these two principles that I want to share, the first one is kind of what's on me and the second one is what's on him. And so the first one is simply that I'm taking it a day at a time. And that is silly. We know that. But how often we practice that is another story. There are appropriate times to make plans and have ambitions. And then there are times when you hit a crisis and you ration, right? Joseph of Egypt, seven years where they prepared and seven years where they rationed. And the Lord can help you know where you're at in your life right now. <laughs> Follow him. But as for me and my house, we will be rationing for a year. And I have to be okay with that and accept that. So each day I'm going to wake up and I'm going to simply devote what I can in that day. And I'm just going to look at that day and what I can do. And I'm not going to look too far ahead at everything that I still have to do. I'm going to do everything I can to share the messages of Christ and to be a mom and a wife. And I'm going to ignore the fear that I'm not doing enough or sacrificing enough to complete the work that I've been given. And I'm going to push away the fears that there's too much to be done. And I'm going to trust him to magnify what I can give right now. And I will fail at that. <laughs> I have been taught this, but I fail at it still every day, multiple times a day. Half of my mental effort right now is dedicated to trusting that he can help me do this. <laughs> but in the quiet moments, when the darkness dissipates just a little bit, I feel that and I know that he can magnify what we can give. <laughs> my efforts may seem measly compared to what I've been able to give at other times in my life, but it's not my work. And I make a pretty poor partner in this work, but he chose me, so that's on him. <laughs> Second principle, and this one is taught a little more directly in the verse that we just read. There's three phrases that I want to pull out of this verse. First phrase, King Benjamin was commanded. Second phrase, his frame was shaking because he was so tired and old. <laughs> and then the third phrase was that he was being supported, that the Lord was suffering him to uh, complete the work that he had been given. Now, it's interesting <laughs> because the Lord could have just as easily asked King Mosiah to share these messages, right? We know that King Mosiah goes on to be a very good king and he goes on to follow the spirit really well, completely sets up a new system of government <laughs> and is an incredible man. So King Benjamin could have gotten up and said, I declare that my son is now your king and I'm going to turn the time over to him. <laughs> but King Benjamin had been commanded by the Lord to share this message. Why King Benjamin? When King Mosiah could have done it, why King Benjamin? After his tired body is trembling and exhausted, and after a lifetime of service, the Lord asked him to do this. We don't know why. We don't know why the Lord asked King Benjamin to do it. And perhaps that is an unsatisfying answer, but it is a true answer. Perhaps the Lord needed a little bit more sacrifice so he could sanctify the message a little bit more, drive it a little more home with the people. Perhaps King Benjamin needed another lesson in his life to be a little more prepared for the next life to know that the Lord would support him in whatever needed to happen. Maybe King Mosiah was scared witless and needed to watch his father be supported so that he, so King Mosiah would know that the Lord would support him while he was king. 
but we don't really know why the Lord chose King Benjamin. The reason that I teach this, that we don't know his reason, is because I also want to teach that the Lord does have a reason. And there's two things that I know about the Lord, and we're going to talk about each one. The first one is that the Lord is not unwise. And the second one is that the Lord is not cruel. So the Lord is not unwise. We don't know why the Lord asked an old king to stand up and tremble and have a really difficult time after a lifetime of service, but we do know that he had a good reason. I don't know why I'm having a baby right now, but I, with the circumstances that surrounded me getting pregnant right now, I know that the Lord has a reason, even if I don't know that reason right now. I don't know the reasons, but I do know the Lord and I know that he is wise. I know that he sees more than I do. I know that he is manipulating the details in my favor for me. I know that I will not regret following him. I have a million reasons as to why this is a bad idea. <laughs> I have a lot of other work that needs to be done. <laughs> I am terribly inefficient when I'm pregnant. I have other children who could use a loving mother right now. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of things that I'm going to have to sacrifice that I don't want to sacrifice that I feel like are important. And... I could say no or throw a fit, but I know in reality, I would only be hurting myself and my family. The Lord has a reason. I don't know his reason, but I do know him and I'm so blessed to know him. So the Lord is wise and he has reasons. I've learned that that's not always the most comforting knowledge that he has his reasons unless it is combined with the second part, and that's that the Lord is not cruel. The Lord doesn't sacrifice us for a greater good. He didn't look at King Benjamin and be like, mm, sorry, like you're going to have to do this because it's what's best for the people and just kind of forget about King Benjamin, right? He doesn't have to sacrifice us for a greater good. Anything that he's going to be choosing to do in our lives. Yes, it can bless a multitude of people, but it will also bless us if we turn to him. <laughs> My kids may get a more short-tempered mother right now, but they will also have a mother who apologizes frequently. <laughs> they will have a mother who knows that her heavenly father loves her and cheers her on even when she's not perfect. They will learn compassion <laughs> and they will learn that the Lord will not abandon them even when he's pushing them farther than they think they can go. <laughs> if the Lord has asked you to do something hard, it is okay to be afraid. It is okay to feel like it's impossible. It's okay to not know how to do it. And it's okay to fail multiple times. <laughs> Trust him for two reasons. One, because he has his reasons and he's wise. And two, because he's not cruel. He loves you, not just everybody and doing this for a good reason. And your suffering is worth it because it's for a good reason, but because he's doing it for you, for them, but also for you. He loves you. And if he's going to ask you to do something, it will bless you and your family, your loved ones. I know this to be true. In the midst of all of my other feelings, I do know that that's true. Because I have had very sacred experiences with my Heavenly Father and I know him. I know him and I know he loves me. And I say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>